Hey guys, I'm Chris Dora. I'm about to throw you through the paces of fishing the Matau River in Orton. Now this isn't a fish porn video. In fact, I don't expect to catch fish, despite this being one of the most heavily populated brown trout streams in Australasia. What we're looking at doing is talking you through a day or two on the river with me as I'm fishing my way through my thoughts, what I'm looking for, and how I'm going to do things. Now, some spectacular dry fly opportunities, some fantastic nymphing awaits the angler that's keen to get out there and run through the paces. Over the series we're going to cover nymphing, the river itself, spent spinners and the dry fly hatch, the main Dun hatch. Hopefully we can find those rising fish. There's warmer days that we've had so far this autumn aren't boding well for big synchronous hatches. However, once they suddenly start coming through and the temperature's cool and we get into our true autumn weather, you should get out there and enjoy this jewel of New Zealand fly fishing. Southland's Matau River is quite possibly one of the most famous brown trout streams in the southern hemisphere, and rightly so. The abundance of stable rocky riffles flowing into deep stable pools provides the perfect habitat for large numbers of wild brown trout averaging a shade under three pound, as well as a huge number of invertebrate insects required to sustain them. The Matara issues from the hills just south of Queenstown flows through northern Southland towns such as Garston and Athol before taking an easterly twist and flowing through Riversdale, Gore, Matara Windham and into the sea at its productive estuary at Fort Rose, just north of Invercargill. Hey, so I've been fishing the Matara for near on 30 years now since a young teenager and it's still a river that intrigues me. It can be taken as easily as you wish to by throwing an indicator and a pair of bead heads through riffles all day, or you can get technical and chase these fish in their natural habitat, either nymph site nymphing through the edges or looking for those famous April Matara hatches. It is possibly one of New Zealand's only true match to hatch fisheries where you must match the exact phase of the hatch that the fish are feeding on. It pays to keep an eye on the margins and be aware of what else is drifting. So if the rise forms change or the fish become disinterested in your emerger, you know immediately what size spent spinner you're going to have to switch to. Long light leaders and pinpoint presentations are the key to the Matara, as is matching your fly selection to what it is the fish are feeding on and ensuring they notice it without becoming suspicious. The Matara is a dry fly purist stream as well as general fly fishermen from beginners through to experts seeking whatever it is they wish to fish. Okay, tackle for the Matara. Now this is one place where I'm not gonna use my fast action backcountry fly kit. You simply don't need it. And you need something that's gonna cushion the blow on the finer tippets you're likely to be using. The Scott G series, 8 foot 8 4 weight and 8 foot 8 5 weight, in my mind are the perfect Southland lowland stream rods, and mo mostly so on the Matara. They certainly have the power to, st to stop a fish when it gets downstream of you in the riffles, but also protect that 5 and 6x tipper that we often go to in April here on this river. It allows very subtle, very pinpoint presentations at short range, which is often the norm. It also allows you to lean back the rod and flex that butt section to get a little bit more distance where you need to nymph that far out seam. Now I tend to stay away from more aggressive lines here. The universal and power tapers that I use on the likes of the Ariti and other wind prone rivers generally land quite heavily. The Airflow Tactical fo features a pinpoint, very fine 20 foot forward taper. It turns over impeccably with longer leaders and small flies. It also means that the drop and flatter pulls is a lot softer and the fish aren't feeling the drop of those flies or that line in their natural environment on calmer days. My leaders are generally 10 foot 4x tapered leaders, nylon tapered leaders, and to that I attach a tippet ring and up to five feet of level 5x or 6x tippet. I want my flies to crash down with a little bit of, uh, little bit of slack line and so immediately they're drifting how I want them to drift. I also go fine a tippet as well to cut through the, the surface currents when nymphing. I want my small light nymphs to get deep as soon as they can and be fishing as soon as they can. You don't necessarily want long drifts here on the Matara, you want short pinpointed drifts that are going to catch fish. My awesome fly box relies heavily on mayfly, however I do have another fly box which does have free living caddis, case caddis, chironomids and snails. You notice here a, a, um, a selection of size 16 and 18 nymphs with 2.5mm, 2mm beads and unweighted. I also have some copper beads in here 
and in another box I have some red beads, some silver beads and other flies to grab attention for when the vertebrae drift is heavy and you need the fish to hone in on your fly. Dry fly wise, you can't go past a good emerger pattern. An emerger is that stage between the nymph and the adult where the mayfly is stuck within the surface film. Trout pr uh, pr uh, predate heavily on this stage and will often feed on it to the exclusion of others. A, fish, a trout are feeding on duns on top of the surface, they'll happily accept an emerger. However, if they are locked in on the plethora of emergers, that is all they're going to look for. Similar spinner patterns. If trout are locked in on spent spinners, you'll need a good spinner imitation. They won't eat your, your dun and they won't look at your emerger. They focus on that certain phase of the hatch. Of course, a general terrestrial such as a blowfly for bobbing through a riffle above a small bead head, something high vis, and something to give a few options. Keep the flies small as mentioned, size 16s and 18s are my go-to. And if you have trouble seeing those small dries, consider having a sighter or bright post or simply tying your small imitation on behind a higher vis size 14. It's important to have a good floating system when fishing the Matara. When I wish to impregnate every fibre of an indicator, I use loon fly dip, simply dipping the indicator or my blowfly or bushy fly into the solution, giving it a shake, a quick blow or a false cast and it's ready to go. For more specific applications, like if I only wish to float the wing on an emerger, I will use lunar quail. I can get a very specific application, a tiny bit of floating where it's needed. Once your flies become waterlogged or once you've caught a fish, loon top ride not only sucks the moisture back out, but a simple shake of your fly in, or indicator in top ride also coats it again with floating. And of course snake river mud. With the rivers being so low and clear in autumn and these fish being so choosy, hiding your tippet becomes imperative. A quick application of snake river mud will sink your tippet just beneath the surface and take the shine off brand new nylon. Hey, so that's just an introduction to the Matau River and the gear that we use here on the specific fishery. Next time we're going to take a look into nymphing techniques specific to autumn on the Matara and how you can catch more fish down below. I'm Chris Doerr and we'll see you next time. Cheers!